What is up, lenders, benders, and irresponsible spenders? Thanks for sitting down at the messy desk with me this week for a weird, different view today. As some of you may know, uh, and maybe even a subset of those of you might care, it's been a little bit since I've made a video. Um, I've made a couple health updates, kind of talking about what I've been going through with sleep apnea and all that business. And look, I don't really want to get into that because, to be honest, it makes me a little uncomfortable to talk about. But I am very shortly getting help with that. So ideally, fingers crossed, I will be back to my same prolific self relatively shortly. But in the meantime, I just miss making videos, if I'm honest. Um, I've had very little creative drive because I'm exhausted all the time. I'm very sleepy, very tired, very fatigued. Uh, so I don't really have anything to share with you. Uh, I haven't even really been hobbying a whole lot, so I can't even sit here and paint and make a joke out of that. Um, right now, I I'm just sitting down and sleeving a bunch of cards for the game Ascension Tactics, which I, I just got. Uh, it's quite good. I just taught myself how to play it. Yeah, I don't know if any of you are familiar with the Ascension deck building game. Um, classic game. Not great, <laughs> in my opinion. Not a great deck builder. I think it's it sort of built on what Dominion was doing. Um, but kind of fell flat for me. But this blends mechanics of miniatures, hex, uh, hex-based combat style stuff with deck building mechanics, which I have learned. You take a deck building mechanic and uh, anything else going on and you smush that together. And for me, woo, I love it. Very good. I'm excited to force Ricky to play it with me. Anyway, I got nothing going on is essentially what I'm saying. This is quite literally like a vlog um, to make it worthwhile for patrons uh, because I do need money to live. Um, I'm just going to throw up, not that, I'm not just going to throw up, but I'm just going to put up every single Octatrack project that I have on my Octatrack currently. Now, bear in mind, quantity over quality here, there are a, quite a few of them that might not have anything on them. I make projects constantly as demonstrations for students and all that stuff. And, and you might ask yourself, Dan, why don't you just go through and, and delete all those and then upload only the good ones? Brother, I might, because that sounds like a responsible thing to do. But I also might not, because Dan, who turns off the camera, might get very sleepy and just upload them all anyway. Um, but there are a fair amount in there that have stuff, good stuff even, sometimes, um, that I want you to have. You take it. It's yours. Uh, I have some use for it, but you might have some use for it too. Um, and it makes me feel like I'm actually giving you something of value because I don't feel like I've been doing that a lot recently. I don't know if I need to give you things of value. Comment down below, let me know. Do I need to give you anything or can we just vibe together and talk and uh, you know discuss? Because this video isn't nothing. Um, I do have some stuff I wanna talk about and, and I wanna toss it to you to talk back to me. Um, there's this great board game channel called Room and Board who does this table talk back uh, video series where he essentially poses a subject, speaks his mind on it, and then leaves it to the comments to debate and yell and fight and berate him. Uh, and then he comes back and he addresses those and it becomes kind of a discussion. I'd like to do that with you. So that's what's on the docket for today. Um, what is also on the docket is me sleeving just a just a lot, a lot, a lot of cards. Um, but let's talk about first just some general vloggy nonsense. Just what's going on? What's going on with me? What's going on with Dan recently? Uh, not a whole lot, man. I don't sleep super good. Um, just been trying to kind of deal with that. Um, we bought this beautiful Lazy Boy love seat. I think Link might be on it. Or maybe Frank. Are either of them? No, they're on the Ottoman over there. Um, we we bought yeah, this love seat, really expensive. Um, I feel like adulthood is just going into furniture debt. I don't know if anybody else relates to this. We have a Tempur-Pedic mattress back there. Great, love it, um, but it was mondo expensive and we're still paying for it. Um, and now we're paying for this couch too. So yeah, I don't know, man. Everyone talks about car payments. No one tells you about couch payments. Um, 
sleeping upright has helped with the sleep apnea a bit, which is to say that I'm not miserable anymore. Um, cause for a while there, I was literally falling asleep in the middle of sentences. That's, that's how bad it was. It was borderline narcolepsy. Um, it was awful. Uh, but sleeping upright has helped a bit, uh, and hopefully will help bridge the gap until I get one of these things and, and can go full of Morton Joe on you. Um, past that, I never really addressed this, but I've got this cool tattoo right here. I don't know how clearly you can see it with my stupid iPhone. My camera broke also is a thing that's going on in my life. It's just, it's all coming up me. Um, but we'll get that fixed. Don't worry about it. Anyway, I got this tattoo of Morro Rock. Uh, Morro Bay in California uh, is a very special place to me. I grew up going there with my grandparents all the time, who were two of the best people I've ever met. Probably the two best people I ever knew. Um, and my uncle also took me there a lot, and he's like the third best person I've ever known. So a lot of good people taking me to Morro Bay. Um, I, I've sort of continued that tradition with my kids um, and, and Ricky. And um, yeah, it's just a really special place to me. So uh, I can't stop myself from getting all these meaningful ass tattoos. You know, I have uh, this, which means Tim Shell, which is like thou mayest. Uh, you know, essentially free will is great. It's, I don't know, whenever I describe it, it sounds like bootstrap, pull yourself up ideology, which is super not how I take it. I take it to mean like, don't let your circumstances hold you down. You know, circumstances play a part in everything. That's the really fucked up thing about like the lottery of life. Like I was born into this really great family completely arbitrarily. You know, I could have been born into something, a much worse situation. Who knows where I'd be uh, without the circumstances of my birth. Um, however, I was also born with chronic illnesses and it could be really easy to lay down and tell myself that I can't do any number of things because I feel yucky sicky all the time. But because thou mayest, because I can choose to push myself and, and not let that define me, uh, I don't and haven't anymore. Um, I don't know. It's a really thin line between positive uh, self-reinforcement and capitalist bootstrap ideology. Hard to say uh, which line John Steinbeck was on when he wrote it in um, East of Eden. Uh, but regardless, that was my first tattoo. And then I got this tattoo of Luke's drawing uh, of me. This is me, the daddy fish. Um, and I love this one. Uh, it means a lot to me. And then, of course, I got this one. Um, now I think I'm going to get like a poop emoji or something, just something completely on the opposite side of meaningful um, because, yeah, not all tattoos have to be meaningful. Some of them should just be really silly. Um, so maybe I'll do that next. But anyway, I got that done a couple months ago uh, and feel really good about it. I don't know. There's probably other stuff about me and my life that I'm not talking about. Um, the boys both did flag football recently, um, which was interesting. Uh, neither of them seemed to enjoy it very much, but they both kept insisting that they loved it and, and wanted to do it. So Ricky and I were in a weird spot where we'd go to their games and they would kind of just be wandering around and uh, looked miserable. I mean, it's like 107 fucking degrees they have these kids out here in. Um, but they, they just wanted to do it. So, you know, we kept bringing them there. And anyway, that, that just ended. Um, and it's run right into fall baseball uh, for Jude, um, which he's really stoked about. And, and frankly, I'm a lot more stoked about because I feel like my boy is not blessed with finer motor functions and me neither. Um, football is definitely not his game. I feel like maybe baseball uh, could be his thing. Uh, just stick him out in the outfield, you know, let him catch a ball or two. Um, so I'm excited to see I'm excited to see him play. Uh, and and get to feel his excitement about a sport that I love very much and, and love sharing with him. Um, and on that note, we actually went to a Giants game. Uh, saw the Giants play Los Doyers. Uh, did not go well. The Dodgers absolutely smushed us. Um, not that surprising. We're barely playing over 500 this year. And the Dodgers are the Dodgers. They have Freddie Freeman now uh, because if it's one thing they needed, it was offense. Um, and they have, you know, one of the biggest payrolls in the major leagues. So whatever, you know, um, the kids had a great time and I made sure that they kept a good 
you know, perspective that we're not here to watch a team win. We're here to watch baseball and we'll have fun no matter what. And we did. Uh, we saw Wilmer Flores hit a home run. That was awesome. Uh, we had a lot of fun with that. Um, and I got to witness just how fucking corny Dodgers fans are. I mean, like the game could not have been less meaningful and they're cheering like it's a playoff game, like like the season's on the line for them. And it's like, brother, we're like 49 and 52 and you guys have a bajillion dollar payroll. Like you should be winning like it shouldn't be a I don't know. Maybe I'm just bitter. I know I am. Uh, but yeah, that was a lot of fun. That was a really a great time. Um, and I, it's an experience. I'm, I'm glad I got to share with the kids. Um, hopefully we can go back and watch them win a game because that is objectively more fun than watching your team get uh, molly whopped by a bunch of mean boys in blue and white. Um, but yeah, um, Ricky finally got her last name legally changed. Uh, so she's officially Ricky Wolf patriarchy and so on uh i just like that i could give her something that's how i feel about it she gave me two beautiful children uh that i did not work for or work at until i became responsible for them uh and she gave me this really amazing life uh and i feel like i didn't have anything to give her so it was cool to be able to give her my name uh because my last name is objectively pretty cool pretty cool uh pretty poggers so that's nice. Um, and yeah, I think finally that that really is it in terms of the the updates for the Wolf family uh, and what's going on in my life. Um, what I want to talk about today, however, is actually kind of related to things going on in my life, which is uh, responsibility, I guess, addiction. Um recognizing that you may have a problem, really grim stuff ultimately. So uh, stay with me because uh, I don't want to get really dour and, 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 and sad about it. Um, but, you know, I've made multiple videos about gas, um, gear acquisition syndrome, not farts, um, though I could make multiple videos on just on farts. Um, my wife's are terrible, am I right? Um, you know, I, I say that Ricky's farts are not that bad. She's going to really want me to cut this out. Um, but Jude's farts? That kid could clear a room. Anyway, I've made a couple videos on gas and about how you don't need gear and how buying gear can become this vicious cycle. Um, and I feel like maybe I was missing the forest for the trees a little bit. I, I, I go back and I watch those videos um, and I see myself talking from a very specific perspective, which is to say mine. Um, and when you do that, you do miss out on a kind of greater perspective, which could be what does a certain behavior indicate about you, right? Um, I had a lot of problems with gear acquisition syndrome to the point of just constantly buying and selling stuff. I've talked about this multiple times. I don't need to rehash it too much. Um, and I always just thought that it was just kind of part of being a gear hoarder and part of just like being really into this stuff. Um, but when I sort of moved away from making music with uh, outboard gear and, and, and physical gear and making music uh, just focused on the Octa track and, and other stuff, um, my spending habits just sort of shifted. I didn't stop buying a lot of stuff. I guess is the thing. I just started buying a lot of different stuff, which is to say many, many board games, uh, many, many toys being like Warhammer minis and stuff like that. Um, and it took me really an uncomfortable amount of time, probably close to six months. I mean, it was only recently that I kind of admitted this to myself that I think I just have a problem with money. Um, I think for some reason or another that um, I'm sure psychiatrists would have a field day with. I like to spend money. Um, I remember one time I uh, described it to my brother as microdosing happiness, um, which is a truly grim way to think about spending your hard-earned dollar bills. Um, because ideally, you don't rely on consumerism uh, and, and engagement in the capitalist system to provide you a feeling of really rather shallow and temporary happiness, right? That is not a sustainable way of living. 
Um, and so when I described it that way, and when it occurred to me that I was really trying to... How do I put this? For a long time, I've dealt with depression and anxiety um, and, and things like that. And I think for a long time, my purchasing habits were a way to distract from that, a way to try to fill a hole in my chest uh, that I know, like I knew that I couldn't fill, but it's just a, you know, it's a hamster wheel. I don't know if anybody else has experienced this. I hope so. I hope this isn't just like a grim confessional. Um, but now I live a very fulfilling life. And I'm quite happy, if I'm honest. I mean, the sleep stuff sucks ass, and I'm really tired. But, like, aside from that, I have a beautiful wife. I have a great house that uh, I'm lucky to live in. I have two beautiful dogs. Like, I I'm, I'm a happy person. I don't want for very much. But I keep spending money like I'm trying to fill a hole that really isn't even there anymore. And so why am I doing that? And how can I stop? Um, and it became increasingly apparent to me that I couldn't stop. I just kept buying stuff almost compulsively. Um, and I think part of the problem is that I'm very good at convincing myself of things. I'm very good at bargaining um, with other people, but especially with myself. Um, oh, I totally misunderstood what this art was. This guy has like this kind of crazy beard, but I thought he was like broken into a bunch of chunks. And I was like, that's metal as hell. But no, he's just a... Uh, it's just a bearded white dude. Um, well, that card's on the floor now. Anyway, um, so it was really easy for me. Hold tight. To justify to myself my purchases and, you know, why I was buying something or that, oh, this would be the last one because X, Y, and Z. And, you know, I, even though I had said that to myself before, this is yada, yada, right? It's just classic shopping addiction, kind of stuff. Um, and so I, I've taken steps in the last couple of weeks to really try to remedy that. Um, mainly by treating it like a drug addiction or like an alcohol addiction, where I literally have a counter on my phone that just goes up every day saying, hey, it's been this long since you've bought something stupid you don't need, you know? Um, and every time I think I want to buy something, I just, I either I or Ricky really interrogate why I think I want to buy it and why I need it and need being, you know, such a stupid concept with dumb shit like board and card games. And, um, you know, this game that I'm sleeving, notwithstanding, uh, I've done pretty well for the last few weeks, not buying anything. Um, and so the, the topic that I kind of want to chuck back to you and, and hear from you guys on is, you know, have you ever experienced anything like this? What did you do? when you did realize that you had a problem um, controlling yourself or and when you realized that you had an unhealthy relationship with something, it doesn't have to be money. It doesn't have to be drugs. I mean, it could be anything. Um, I know some people experience this with video games. Like I have friends that play League of Legends. Those guys definitely got something going on with that game, man. They should probably stop playing it, but they can't. But they also hate it. So what? what do they do in that instance? You know what I mean? I felt this way with music for a while. I felt kind of trapped. And that's sort of why I sold most of my gear was to force myself out of this dynamic of just acquiring and selling and acquiring and selling. Um, and it's what I'm trying to do now with just hobby stuff in general, you know, stop acquiring and start appreciating, I guess. Um, I don't know. It all feels embarrassing. Is it embarrassing to you to listen to this? Is this going to like ruin my credibility or is this a great moment of vulnerability that's really brave of me? Am I a brave boy or am I a lame boy? You tell me down in the comment section below because I don't know. Um, I think it's tough admitting that you have a problem. And I think it's extra tough when it's something like money because like you feel like, especially as a parent, like you should, like, really? You're buying miniatures at a unhealthy rate and you have children to support like don't get me wrong we're totally fine financially the kids are completely supported they've never gone they've never wanted for anything they're totally fine but it's the principle of the thing right like i'm spending outside of my means regardless 
I shouldn't put myself in any sort of position like that as a father, as a spouse. Uh, so, you know, it's hard to talk about. But I want to talk about it because I feel like if I feel this way, there must be some sort of stigma that makes other people feel a similar way. And it took me so long to admit to myself that I had a problem because I felt embarrassed and, and shamed. And I don't want anybody else to feel that way. So, you know, if you can look at a dumb YouTuber who pedals a $1,500 sampler at you uh, and is now telling you like, hey, man, I spend too much money and you should you should try try to be aware of that because uh, you might be spending too much money or you might be, you know, whether or not you're spending too much money is is almost irrelevant. Right. Because I've never spent too much money. We've always had enough to pay our bills. We've always had enough to, you know, go out and eat like we live fine. We live a totally fine life. But spending too much can mean anything uh, when you can't control it. You know, when you when you don't have control over yourself, that's when you're spending too much, regardless of, of whether it's outside your means. At least that's how I feel about it. But maybe you guys feel differently. You know, I don't know. I hope this is a semi compelling discussion to have, you know, have you had something like this that's hard to admit to yourself, that's hard to face? Have you had to face something like that? Because it's an interesting feeling being an adult man struggling with self-discipline, essentially, having to be kind of policed, uh, you know, both internally and externally. Um, but sometimes that's that that's just what you need when, you know, for whatever reason you got you got problems, man. Um, yeah, so that's. That's kind of it. That's the big vlog update slash, hey, I have a shopping addiction problem slash, do you have any problems you want to air out in my YouTube comments or maybe share with the class how you've dealt with a similar problem? Because, um, yeah, as someone who's dealt with a lot of kind of chronic illnesses, something that I always try to do is share with people what worked for me and what didn't work for me in terms of recovery and, and, and learning to be a more whole person. So maybe some of you can do that with me. Um, and maybe if some of you are in a similar spot, you can look at me and say, Hey, you know, I'm not alone and you're not, you're super not. So I don't know. I have a feeling that spending money compulsively is going to be something that a lot of you identify with. Uh, just given the state of gear acquisition and whatnot. So maybe we start a support group in the old Discord. <laughs> I don't know, man. But anyway, that's probably going to do it for me. I could talk all day uh, to you guys. Um, if you can believe it, I still have still have some more cards to sleeve. Um, you know, we got, we got this far in the video. Look at that. Uh, there's a lot of cards in this dang game. But uh, yeah. Thanks for hanging out with me. Thanks for being patient with me, especially patrons. Um, I've I felt no external pressure from anybody to make a certain type of video or do a certain type of thing. And I've the amount of consistent Patreon support has just been otherworldly to me. Um, I mean, there's been a, a kind of a a decline in my viewership just in general, which is expected, right? Because all this stuff's going on um, and a decline in the Patreon ultimately. But the amount of people that have remained steady supporters and the new people coming in, I mean, it's uh, it's more humbling, honestly, than I have words for. So thank you truly for that, um, especially during this period of time where uh, things have been rough. It's been it's been really nice to have that sort of uh, extra financial support. Um, so, yeah, patrons look out for that freaking huge Octatrack file dump. Um, if any of the projects are just straight up mostly empty, it's a sign. And I'm telling you, start your own project. Start a new project with my stupid templates uh, and make something great and share it with me. And uh, yeah. Here's another call to action before I go. Comment down below and tell me all your fucking sad traumas and shit. Uh, and tell me how you've coped. And uh, we'll talk about it maybe next week. Um, and do a little, little discussion. So, yeah. All right. That's it. I'm done talking now. I'm done wasting your time. 
I'm Daniel. This is my messy room. And I love you more than I love the sweet, sweet feel of sleeved shuffling cards. Ooh, it's buttery smooth, but none so smooth as you, my dear. I'll see you next week.